we're back. It's California Fire Pond 3.0. just came back out. We've got a week's worth of work out here. Finish this fire pond. That means get some pumps running. That means finish off the wetlands. That means finish off the waterfalls and to show you guys the progress that Matt, the homeowner and the rest of his family have made out here working on this thing for the last six months while we were gone. They finished stairs. They finished decks. They finished pavilions. It looks incredible. Let me show you what they've done so far and I'll take you up there and show you what we're going to do soon. We're going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. This is the house. This is the view above the house. Well, you can just see off in the distance, but this view is spectacular it is. Jaggy, we're back. See my glasses? No. <laughs> <laughs> this looks amazing. He's only running some small pumps in this right now, and it already looks like exactly how we thought it would. I walked out this morning from the house, and as soon as I turned the corner, I could hear it. I don't know how you make something look more natural than that. It's incredible. And the, what they've done since we've been gone with the deck and the pavilion, yeah, him so with the plants. This isn't finished yet, but he's gonna bring this up to grade. It's exactly what we were thinking with the boulder tied into the deck. Yep. This somewhere for people to naturally sit and kind of take it all in. He said the kids are using the heck out of the thing. It's a uh, paradise out here. I'm trying to get excited to get to work this morning. Yeah, I know, it's tough. <laughs> it's just incredible. And I was talking with him, she's so excited about all the aquatic plants that she's been working on. Looks great. I mean, the lilies are coming in. What we thought was gonna happen with the existing landscape coming down into the pond, it's starting to happen already. You can see it growing down to the yep. edge of those rocks. One more season, it's gonna be fully enveloped back there. Like you'll only see the big rocks sticking out because those plants are gonna take over right down to the water's edge. So it's coming together. It's coming together to the point where it I'm almost jealous. looks like it's been here for a long time. You know, it's only not even been a year. It's insane. I just love it. Yeah. And they're doing a great job with creating all the pathways and making it super interactive. Remember that big waterfall we built at the top that was seven feet high? Yep. It doesn't look that big anymore. No, it doesn't. You know? It doesn't. So it's starting to come in together. I'm excited to get this thing finished and really see its fullest potential. This is that whole area that was super shallow, kind of like three feet deep in through here. Kids kind of move in throughout these rocks and then actually swim up and underneath this waterfall. I just love the way this turned out with that multiple step in there. Just like we wanted. Water kind of come out over there, kind of dribble down off of this face right here, and then come off that big rock. This waterfall is doing exactly what we wanted. If we wanted it spread out, we actually thought some water would come in off of this rock. With the other pump, 100% it will. But right now, that looks great, the way it's split up at the top. If it looks this good with a small temporary pump on there, imagine what this thing is gonna look like with two giant pumps on here. It's gonna be insane. They finished this whole sunken patio down in here, which just looks incredible. So it was seven feet when it went from there all the way down to where the base of the rocks is, but because there's two feet of water in there, now it's more like a five foot high waterfall, but it still looks incredible. And as you get up into here, this takes you up that pool where the bridge crosses over it, over that pool, and then more waterfalls up on top there. This was that area I worked on quite a bit last time I was out here, trying to replicate nature as much as I possibly could, with water just kind of splitting and rolling. No big cascades, just real gentle moving waterfalls, little plunge pool. How do you get more natural than that? Once these plants start coming in over the edges. It's just gonna look incredible. Here's that wetland filter. So huge wetland filter on here. We got snorkel, snorkel, one, two, three, four centipede. Now we're gonna build another waterfall coming down into here and another wetland filter up on top. Still a little bit more work left to do and this thing will be all buttoned up. So we're just getting the water out of the wetland out of here so we can start working. We're gonna start setting our boulders. We'll get a decent waterfall coming from there. And then we got another waterfall that's gonna come up from there. Our overlap 
top liner in. So this is the liner that's gonna be for this next waterfall section. We built all the rock work inside the wetland. Now we took the wetland liner, we brought it up on top of the shelf here, and we're overlapping this liner down into the wetland. So basically it's acting like a shingle where this liner comes up, this liner goes over, so any water that goes behind the rock stays in our system, keeps going down the hill. What I'm doing now is we've got a huge void behind these rocks that are inside our wetland. I'm trimming all this liner back so we can lay down in here. We want to be able to back the whole thing with gravel and we can start setting some rocks in here, build the next section of the waterfall. Nice. Well, the rain is coming down just enough to make it a muddy mess out here. And what we're gonna try to do is dig the trench for our pipes. Now the one on the right splits off. Half of it's already going into our wetland over here. The other half is gonna move all the way up to the other wetland up that way. This pipe over here is more of the party pump. So we're gonna see if we can trench a little. It's gonna be difficult to be setting boulders just because the straps aren't really safe on those wet rocks and this mud. If this dries up, which we covered yesterday, is gonna turn into like a snot here pretty soon. It just makes it really dangerous. So let's see what we can get done. Go that way! It looks like a coupling of sorts. We'd have to ask Matt. He would know exactly. It's 11 and a quarter. It's like California measurements. They can't do 11s. <laughs> so when we woke up this morning, we had torrential rain. We're not expecting it a whole lot done, but I think there's a big step in moving it forward, at least getting the pipe work. Well, it feels in. good to get something done on a rain day. I don't know, it doesn't feel good yeah, at all. It doesn't feel good to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not carrying the 11 and a quarter fitting. Well, I got the camera. Yeah, okay. <laughs> This thing's 250 pounds. What we're using here is a reason a heavy wall six inch HDPE pipe. One pump is gonna move somewhere around like 30 plus thousand gallons an hour. So we're gonna be moving a lot of water through these pipes. And this is not like using flex PVC where we could just bend it in place. We've gotta use these heavy cast iron fitting to make our turn. So that's an 11 and a quarter degree turn. We're gonna head this up the hill. Our goal today is just get one more section of pipe in, backfill it a bit because what we've gotta do here is tie in all this boulder outcropping into our second series of waterfalls. Now we had to get this pipe down low enough to make that happen. I don't know what kind of lizard comes out in the rain, but... Good morning, everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is Wednesday morning. It rained literally all day. In fact, if you guys are having drought conditions, call us, because I think it just follows us wherever we go. Flash flood warnings, mudslide warnings, all kinds of stuff that happened last time we were out here. And I don't think it's rained for six months, so the fact that it decides to do that when we show up is super cool. Like, good job. So we didn't get a whole lot done yesterday. Today is go day. We have to get this waterfall done, because right behind that is a massive 20 by 25 foot wetland that's gonna take some time because of access and everything else. The first thing we want to get done is move this rock. We were originally gonna use this rock to build a waterfall and it would have looked incredible. Coming off of this, facing right towards the stairs over there. The challenge is, is we can't find a frame rock of this height over in here. Can't find one over here either that's gonna fit around it. It's gonna cause us a lot of challenges working with the rock that big right away because we gotta come up super high right here and super high right here. So instead, we're gonna kinda come down a little bit lower where we have some manageable rocks to create more of a staircase type waterfall. That's the frame rock. Then behind Jose here is our spill stone. We got another one that kind of frames it out. We're playing around with the idea of trying to get water to come off of that. It could be kind of difficult, but maybe. This then ultimately frames out something else. And now we're gonna build that next waterfall back behind this. How you feeling, bud? I feel great. <laughs> I'm feeling great because we're three days in, so we're starting our fourth day. The wetland excavation is happening. This is a gigantic dig over here. But up to this point, we've got a lot of waterfall work done, huge boulders have gone in, big bib liners. So I'm super excited that this is actually happening this morning. That means we should, should be on track to finish on Saturday, which is our finish time. Today, really, I'm gonna be focusing on that while you stay here and get this all buttoned up so that tomorrow we can just get going all the rock work once the wetland's in. Get to my Saturday. 
That's sounding pretty optimistic, Jack. So you know what? This sounds like a perfect time to take a break and get back to our fish retailing pond at Aqualand. I can't believe we started this process over a month and a half ago. That means a month and a half ago, we pulled all of our koi out of the original fish retailing system, put them into these 500 gallon tubs, which they called home, which can't be the nicest home, especially compared to what they had before. Now that we finally have the new and improved wetland filter done, now we're totally ready to put our new fish back into their new home. Good morning, everybody. We're about ready to do something that should have been done a long, long time ago, but no better time than the present. So let's get this going. We're gonna start moving some giant fish over to our new koi pond. We wanna introduce a few fish every day just so we don't stress the system and raise those ammonia levels too high. But we're gonna take that big giant thing there, put it in here. The reason we're putting it in here first is I really wanna get some measurements on it and some photos of it at the same time. So you can see Jack taking the water out of this area, bring it into here, then we'll use our sock net, place it in here, snap a quick picture, then quickly move them from there over to the new koi pond. Oh, I'm so excited. It's just gonna be so cool. Can't wait to see these giant fish in their new home and how they interact with this new sand bottom. Here we go. Down. Hey guys, it's Jack with Team Aquascape. I'm sitting in front of our fire and water fountainscape display in our retail store. Last week we discussed the difference between the glass and the rock that we have sitting on top of our fire features. Today is the day we're gonna figure out it's actually true that the glass does a different flame compared to the rock. So right here we have our black fire glass. So I'm gonna swap out our lava rock with our black fire glass and we're gonna see the difference in the height of flame. So now, let's fire this thing up. All right, so I just started it up, so I'm just about ready. We're good, and we're gonna turn this thing up. That's on high. I think we can tell that the glass made a huge difference compared to the lava rock. So now, since we proved our theory right, if you guys want a bigger flame, then you guys need to get the fire glass instead of the lava rock. Hey guys, so next week, I'm gonna share with you guys something super special, but I also have a big surprise about this fire pond project. So I can't share with you what the big surprise is. I obviously can't share with you what the special thing is about next week until the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end, and I'll see you then. wouldn't take on a travel project like this by ourselves just because of all the logistics involved here moving up a thousand tons of boulders up to the top of this mountain having all this heavy equipment together staging area without a customer like Matt like a project like this doesn't come together with us doing travel normally we do travel stuff it's just a couple weeks if we had to do this on our own this would be a couple months of yeah. working out here this is a gigantic residential project this is probably one of the largest I've ever done it's definitely the largest I've ever done we're fortunate that yeah. we had somebody like Matt that actually partnered up with us and was able to like facilitate all this stuff because honestly you could talk about some of these rocks like look at the rocks that are around here some rocks are like 10 to 12 tons mm -hmm. that could be one rock on a truck imagine how much it costs to get one rock up here never mind multiply that by 30 that are just like it and then you've got to figure out all the other rocks so the trucking alone could make it exponentially expensive so having him as part of this project is the only way this was going to happen the man the myth the legend look at him up there oh my god <laughs>
soil that came out of the bottom of this hole for this wetland area here. We have about 160 aqua blocks. We're gonna do two snorkels and eight centipedes running through here. So we've got snorkel, centipede, 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 snorkel, centipede, 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 centipede. Once we get all our aqua blocks laid out, it's really important that we get everything square, things marked out. You can see the orange line on the bottom. That's where Matt's gonna start digging out this area for the centipedes. Once that's done here, then we can do the other side and then we'll go get our fabric liner and may or may not know the routine, but we'll show you a little bit later. But a huge, huge wetland filter for a pretty massive pond down there. So we've got a smaller wetland here, approximately 15 by 20, and then we've got this 19 by 28 foot one up here. is to get some sand in here. Uh, we're just gonna cushion all this. It's got a lot of rock and stuff in the soil. So we'll put a couple inches of sand down, some sand in the trough to kind of level everything out. Then we'll be good to go. down there. We just had spent all the time laying these out. You can see how perfect they're setting down in there. They wouldn't have set that way if we didn't spend an extra amount of time making sure everything was nice and level. So we've got our snorkel. We've got three and a half centipedes coming down through here. Three and a half centipedes coming down through here and like 160 aqua block. So they're going to keep working on this. I need to start working on this seam. This seam is going to be a pain in the butt. So we've got a factory straight edge off of the wetland liner. This one's straight too, but because of the folds in this, it's just going to be really really difficult to do. Aqua blocks are in. Five to six inch cobbles are over the top. You can see we've got the whole area covered. The idea again is as that water moves up through the centipedes, it hits that layer of cobbles, disperses out through the interstitial space between all the cobbles, then hits this layer of gravel, two to three inch size stuff, does the same thing. And then over the top of that, we'll do a one to two and then finish and place up at this grade, leaving us with about 12 inches of visible water in here, creating more of an upper pool. We've got our two lines coming down into our centipedes over here. So there's a six inch line that's gonna come up to here to these two four inch, then reduce down to the three inch, and then go through those centipedes, and then everything will come up over that way. I basically finished seaming the liner, and we're at goal by the end of the day is to get all the gravel and stuff into here, and then hopefully actually start setting a couple boulders. So we'll see how the day goes. Last day. We're hitting it hard. We got the wetland. Oh done. my god. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> we are working in the wetland. Look at the size of some of these rocks. Like over six foot tall. This rock probably weighs every bit of like five tons. Just huge monstrous boulders. I love the way this looks. Like light coming up through here, highlighting this. We're actually putting in a waterfall too. We're, we're probably not gonna finish it, but it'll be there. Like we could see a cascade coming down through here, going through this V. That's for the auxiliary pump. So when Matt wants to really fire things up, he'll add another 30,000 gallons an hour to this thing <laughs> and it'll be cascading over here just gushing water into this pool he wanted to have something where it was like a foot 14 inches deep for the kids to come up here and climb around the rocks and that's what we've done here this is a huge filter now it doesn't seem so large because we've closed it into like maybe a 12 or 15 foot by by 15 foot pool so this is going to be a really awesome spot and what's cool about this is matt wanted to find a way to draw it to draw people up here and i think this is going to do just that yeah it's absolutely amazing this rock is a really cool rock it's barely dipping in this and it's going to be in the water like this much 
much, isn't it? Like this should be underwater? Yeah, that should be just barely underwater. So that's a cool little sea rock. You got your feet in the water. It's hiding our snorkels. There's a lot of there's a lot of necessary rocks here, right? We've got plumbing back in here that the Matt's guys are putting together. These are the two pipes going down to our centipede module. So we're gonna be feeding from that six inch into here. It'll split, go down to the bottom, go through the centipede, up to the aqua blocks, all that rock and gravel, and it'll exit out that waterfall that you're working on right now. What's so impressive about this pool is just the size of it. It's the filter, but it's bigger than 90% of the ponds we build at home. Just the filter. All this feeds down all the way from there. Sun. That sun is out today. Anyways, crazy, crazy day. We've got about three hours left. We've been killing it. Everybody's working so hard. We've got about three hours of daylight left. And like always, we run into an obstacle. There's been plenty of obstacles on this job, but this is an obstacle we might not be able to fix. The big machine that's setting all of these 10,000, 8,000 pound boulders is down. Mechanics are working on it now. We're gonna see if we can't get that thing back up and running and get a couple more rock sets. We need like a dozen more rock sets and we can fire this baby up. But without a machine, who knows? All right, the machine is back up. Mechanics are here. We're gonna give it a shot. See if it can't pick this bad boy up. We can set a few more rocks. Jack, are we back in business? Not exactly. But it's working. Matt is down to to get these rocks in because the problem is the machine's not really swinging. There's a problem somewhere in the turntable. We'll swing once in a while. He's just gonna back up and turn and try and get this thing in. I like the tenacity. I love right, it. Right. I want this. I want it. All right, once in a while down. it'll turn, but I don't know, you'll see it. If it does turn, you'll see it kind of go notchy and jumping, like something's wrong with Watch it. Watch that cone, man. He's gonna drive right over his sprinkler head. Yeah, he turned into place. Does he see the sprinkler head? That's the water box. All right, we're setting rock. Here we go. never happens, right? It never <laughs> what, happens. What, working to the last minute? Well, that always happens, <laughs> but we're not going to finish. The machine really, I mean, it, it put a lot of hard hours in on this job, but it just couldn't take it anymore. No. It wasn't enough to really get it finished. So there are still some things to be done here to actually make this function, right? Yeah. And Matt's going to take care of it. Matt's going to take care of it. This is the half full type thing again. Now we get an excuse to come back. We are going to come back. <laughs> we're going to come back and we'll show you guys this feature completely finished and running. It looks fantastic already. I can only imagine when we're 60,000. <laughs> it's gonna be, be awesome. Good job, bud. Yeah, boom. Well, guys, I'll leave you with this sunset. We'll see out here. Every night, it's just been absolutely gorgeous. We tried, but we got so close. Just so close. Machines are down. Things aren't working anymore, but it's 98% finished. 99. Um, he could technically turn it on. I really love the way all this looks. We're gonna get all kinds of little plants in here to soften up all this rock work. It's just gonna look incredible. Can't wait to come back out here and show you guys this thing running. Big shout out to that man. The man with the plan, Matt. Thank you for the opportunity. It was an absolute pleasure. So what an awesome opportunity. I know it sucks that we didn't get to finish it. I mean, here's what I do know. 100% we're going back. And I hope I get the opportunity to go back with Jack. Maybe we'll bring some friends along with us because it is such an awesome property. Hopefully you guys loved that whole process. Definitely one of the biggest projects I've ever been part of. But we keep moving. So next week, we have Japanese koi coming in from Japan. These are fish that we picked out shortly after that. Head out to Tom Smith's place at Garden. State Koi, where I can look at the way he's retailing fish. Head out to Brian Fitzsimmons' place and check out his whole operation. The reason I need to really go out there is because Brian Fitzsimmons was the middleman from all the Japanese Koi. Japanese Koi basically flew in from Japan out to New Jersey. He quarantined them and then he brought them out here for us. So all those fish are coming in. I need to be more educated. And so Tom Smith is putting together an event and we are now responsible for $100,000 worth of fish. And I think it would be a good idea if I knew how to take care of them a little bit better. We're gonna go through three days of intensive education on koi, just how to keep them in the best environments possible for them. And then I'm hopefully getting to see their retail operations, you know, basically be able to compare best practices with each other. So you guys make sure you jump in next week, see what these Japanese koi look like. They're so, so, so incredible. And you get to learn everything that I'm learning about Japanese koi as well. So make sure you tune in next week. We'll keep doing this. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends. Maybe we'll do it again. Bye.